Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Tom Bailey. I'm the product manager for TrueBend Machines here at Trump North America. With me today is Vincent Iozo, our applications engineer for TrueBend. Vince is going to be demonstrating the equipment for us today. Our live broadcast from Farmington today is centered on the TrueBend 3000 series. What we're looking at today is the second generation of the TrueBend 3000 series product. This machine was released to the U.S. market at Fabtech in Atlanta last year. For those of you not familiar with the first generation 3000 series machine, this is the entry level CNC press brake in the Trump product portfolio. Personally, I'm not a big fan of the entry level moniker for this machine because if you look at the performance, the precision, the technology in this machine, it really sits in the middle of the market segment when you look at the full market for CNC press brakes. Today what we're going to be looking at is some of the design enhancements in this machine over the first generation 3000 series. We're going to pay a particular focus on the machine control so you can see how the new control operates. And then we're going to run some demonstration parts for you so you can actually see the machine in action. So at this point in time, let's take a moment to look at some of the new features on this machine. So the slide that you see here highlights some of the things that are new and different on the current generation 3000 series. We'll take a closer look at each of these, but just to give you an overview, one of the biggest new features is the control. This is a multi-touch control, so it operates just like a tablet computer in terms of the way that the operator interacts with the machine. We also offer an extended opening height option on these machines now. So the standard opening is 13.6 inches. That can be extended to 19.6 inches optionally. We've changed the safety system on this machine to the latest generation Benguard block laser system. This is the second generation safety system from LaserSafe. We use it on our 5000 and 7000 series machines and find it to be very productive. We also offer now hydraulic tool clamping as an option on the machine. The standard machine is going to come with a manual clamping system. One of the things that we also want to focus on here, and you'll see it a little closer in a second, is the compact footprint of this machine. It's a 10 foot working range machine, but because of the unique frame design, the overall size of the press brake is just shy of 12 feet. Another aspect of this frame design, which you'll see in a moment, we'll look a little bit closer at, is the fact that you can use the entire working area of the machine without any obstructions. We've also enhanced the productivity of the machine with higher machine dynamics, so the y-axis and back gauge travel speeds have all been improved. So stepping forward, let's take a look at the technical data for these machines. We offer two models in this new 3000 series, 3066 and 3100 machines. The 3066 is a 72 ton, 6 foot machine. The 3100, which we're looking at today, is a 10 foot machine with 110 tons of pressing force. A quick look at the highlights on the spec sheet, four ten thousandths repeatability in the y-axis. The rapid travel speeds for the y-axis, 472 inches a minute down and up, so it's a very dynamic machine from a pressing speed standpoint. The actual working speed of the RAM is up to 35 inches a minute. Standard stroke length is 7.8 inches, and with the extended opening machine, the stroke length is also extended to 13.7 inches. Now let's take a closer look at the machine itself. So here you can see an inside view of the press brake looking towards the front. What we want to focus here is the frame design of the machine. This new machine is using a O-frame or closed frame design as opposed to an open or C-frame design on a traditional press brake. Typically what you would see on a brake like this is somewhere right around here relative to the tool clamping. You would have the side frame for the machine and then you would have a C-shaped cutout in the side frame to allow you to use the tool clamping all the way to the ends. With a closed frame design, the frame actually sits completely outside the working range of the machine. So you can see your tool clamping range ends here. The frame doesn't start until here. This allows you to back gauge along the entire working range of the machine, left to right. It also allows you to bend a flange that's the full depth of the machine by the full width of the machine. So there's no throat depth restriction that we have to work against. The downside to this design is, as you can see, the side of the machine is completely enclosed by the frame. So it is no longer possible to bend a part off the end of the machine. The reverse to that is, because of the much larger working area inside the press brake, you're much less likely to find a situation where you would have to do that. The side frame is also enclosed by a safety shield. You can see the safety shield here does pivot open. This allows access for longer tool segments to come through this cutout in the machine frame or for maintenance operations. 
The side shield is safety interlocked, so when the door is open, the machine will not operate. It assumes that you're either setting up or working on maintenance. You can also get a closer look here at the safety system that we're using. Again, as I mentioned before, this is the second generation block laser safety system from LaserSafe. While providing the full working range safety protection around the tool, essentially it's a two inch by two inch window looking at the upper tool, it's also a very productive safety system. So we find that it really gives us the best balance between operator protection and productivity on the machine. Now I'd like to take a closer look at the machine control. This is one of the highlights of the new machine design. The model of control we're using here is the Dellum T3500T. As mentioned before, it is a multi-touch style control, so it operates like a tablet computer. It does include Trump technology loaded onto the machine control, so that's the full Trump tool library and also our material information. The control can be adjusted position-wise thanks to swivel and rotating control arm, so the operator can position it to a comfortable position. The machine is prepared for a network connection, so you can download programs over a corporate network, and always includes USB ports for manual loading of data. We also integrate this control into a very robust enclosure to protect it from any accidents or collisions. Let's take a closer look at the machine control itself. So here you can see the job menu on our machine control. This shows all the programs that we have currently loaded onto the machine. The job menu lists some basic information about each program, the number of bends, uh, how, when it was programmed, material type and thickness. And then you can see at the left, it also shows you a graphical preview of what the finished part looks like to help the operator locate the correct part number. Vince will go ahead and call up a program for us so we can see what this looks like in the production menu. So here you can see the production menu of the screen. This is where the operator is going to spend the majority of the time operating the press brake, and it's broken out into several sections, each containing an important piece of information. The top left side of the screen shows the simulation of the current bending program. So here we have the machine frame, the tool setup, the back gauges, and then also the part that we're going to bend. And of course it will step through the program with us from bend to bend to show the operator how the part is supposed to form. The top right side you can see the tool setup information for this job. So this is showing what our tool stations look like and where they're going to be located on the machine. It will also highlight the tool station that the current bend is supposed to be performed on. The bottom left side of the screen shows you some basic parameters about the program, what tooling is being used, the material, the type of bending angles. The bottom right side of the screen shows your operator his correction information. So this would be where you would enter angle corrections or flange length corrections for the program that you're working on. You also have the ability to create a larger graphical view if you choose. So the operator can get rid of the detail view and go just to a simulation view, the full size of the control. And again, because of that multi-touch display support, you can use various gestures to rotate, pan, and zoom the simulation to wherever the operator wants to see it. Now these 3D graphics that you see on this particular job come from our offline programming software. But you do also have the ability to create graphical programs right on the machine control. And this may be useful for more simple part geometries. What we've done today is we've prepared a part print for Vince that we want him to program and run for you just to give you a demonstration of how programming on the machine control works. So here's the hat section that we've designed for Vince to run. Vince is going to go ahead and program this in the control for us so we can see how that works. He has to enter some very basic information about the new job that he wants to run, a program name, a material type, a material thickness, and then an overall length for the profile. He can also select whether he wants to use inside or outside dimensioning for the measurements that he puts in based on the print that he's received. Once Vince has entered this basic data, the machine goes to a graphical programming screen. Here Vince can use the touch screen to actually generate a rough profile that corresponds to the print. Obviously that's not perfectly accurate. What we're going to do now is go back to each individual segment of our profile and then adjust it to the correct length according to the print. Flange lengths or angles can also be adjusted through this menu. 
So obviously we just drew a couple of simple 90 degree bends for this demonstration, but you can really program anything that you can visualize from the end this way. It is possible to create more complex programs on the machine control. However, these are usually better suited to the offline programming system. And of course, the benefit to the offline programming is it keeps the machine productive while you're getting the next job ready to run. So this is the hat section that we actually run a run. You can see the control software will generate a tooling setup for us automatically. So it's loaded the correct punch and die into the machine based on the material type and thickness. This looks like a good setup, so we're going to go ahead and keep it. Now the software is going to show us a simulation of the bending program that we've just created. So here Vince can step back to the very beginning of the program and then step through all the bends and make sure that it looks good. All the back gauge positions are okay. There's no collision alarms anywhere. Now you can see the software is giving us a full 3D simulation of the profile that we've drawn. And it will insert things like uh, back gauge retractions wherever necessary to avoid collisions. So it tries to do as much thinking as possible for the operator. If we go back to the production screen now, you can see the profile that we've created is automatically loaded and ready to go. So now Vince is going to go ahead and set up the press brake and run this channel for us. Here at Trump in our press brake product line, we have standardized on the wheel and new standard style clamping system. We think there's a lot of advantages to this design and we've used it as the standard clamping system on our press brakes for many, many years. One of the most obvious benefits, and you see that here as Vince is setting up the press brake, the new standard style clamping system is designed for smaller segments of tooling. This allows us to be very flexible with our tooling investment and our tooling setup. So we can use various smaller pieces of tooling in order to build the station length that we need to make our part instead of having tooling that's dedicated in length to the part you want to produce. Because of the nature of the clamping system and the tang geometry on the tools, the wheel and new standard clamping system forces the tooling to self-seat and self-align when clamping pressure is applied. This is true regardless of whether we're talking about manual or automatic wheel style clamping. It's always self-seating and self-aligning once clamping pressure is applied. So all the operator has to do is load tools and he's ready to run. So there's our completed hat channel. It's a pretty simple part, of course, but it's just designed to show you how easy it is to program at the machine control and make a simple part quickly. Now we'll have Vince call up a little bit more complicated job to show off some more of the functionality of this machine. This next job that we're going to run is going to be 18 gauge stainless material and it's a box with eight bends. It also requires three different stations, so you'll see that Vince is setting up for stage bending here. While Vince is setting up the tooling, why don't we take a closer look at some of the features on this machine. One of the things to look at are the linear front supports on this machine. Linear front supports are very nice for an operator to provide a part rest for longer parts, a place to put a stack of smaller parts, or even a place just to rest a part when you need to measure it or check a flange dimension. The machine guide rail is included with every press brake from Trump from the factory. So our machines are always prepared to receive these front supports, whether you purchase them up front or not. This particular linear support that you see here has a plastic top on it, so it's very good for non-marking applications, particularly stainless steel materials. We do also offer fully hardened front supports with a higher weight load if required by your application. In addition to the front supports, you can see our operator pedestals here. 
This particular machine has two. The secondary pedestal is optional. The operator pedestal is a new design. It's very lightweight and easy to manipulate for the operator. It includes two pedals, obviously the down function pedal which activates the ram and also an emergency up that will return the ram to top dead center even if the machine is stopped. The down pedal is also a two position switch. So if the operator presses very hard on this pedal, it's going to emergency stop the machine. For example, if you have a part pressed against the back gauges and it slips under the gauge fingers, the operator's weight will tend to carry them into the working range of the machine, obviously a potentially dangerous situation. The pedal is designed such that your weight carries you onto that emergency stop and e-stops the press before you can have an accident. Vince has completed his setup, so now we'll take a closer look at him bending this part. So there's our 8-bend stainless steel box. You can see a little bit trickier than what we did before. So this part is still, even though it's a little bit complicated, fairly rectangular, uh, not too tricky in terms of bending. And of course, we want to show you something a little bit more complex than that to really show off what our machine can do. So Vince is going to set up and run another demonstration part for us. This next demonstration part is going to be a little bit heavier material. It's 3 16 mild steel. And it is an automotive component. One thing that you're going to see here when Vince completes his tool setup, this part has some very, very complex geometry. The outside contours are fairly complicated for such a small part. This makes it difficult to gauge with a traditional press brake. One of the things that we're demonstrating here today is the back gauge system, and this is probably the next point that would be good to take a look at. A typical back gauge system on a machine like this would be a four-axis CNC back gauge. So that would be two gauge fingers with independent CNC control left to right. They would have to move in tandem in and out as well as up and down. This is great for regular rectangles or square parts and gives you pretty much all the functionality you need to make the machine productive. However, when you start to get into more complex shapes, a more sophisticated back gauge system is ideal. In this case, what we have here is a five axis back gauge. Very similar to a four, except for the fact that the left side gauge finger has an additional plus or minus three inches of travel relative to the right side gauge finger. This allows us to capture tapered edges, uh, offset edges, or even radius corners. You'll also see when we get a little bit closer on the view here, these back gauge fingers have a radius cutouts inside them, almost like the fingers on your hand. So they can capture complex part geometries in a firm and positive location so that the operator can consistently make a good bend even if he doesn't have a square edge to gauge off of. So again, Vince finished his three-stage setup. Now he's just going to align the lower dies off of the position of the upper tools. The upper tools he positioned using the scale on the front of the machine. Clamping is activated and he's ready to bend. So here we'll give you a look at the part so you can see what it is that we're making here. Here's our 316 steel part. You can see the outside contour on this part, pretty complicated. Not a lot of square edges anywhere on this. The first bend in this program is about the only one where we have a good flat edge to gauge off of. So on this step, Vince is actually going to use those finger-shaped contours on the five-axis back gauge to capture two radii. 
this type of bend would be next to impossible to gauge accurately with a four axis back gauge. You would need some kind of fixturing or front stop in order to repeat it. Here again we're capturing radius edges. These radius edges are also on two different planes so the back gauge fingers are offset from each other in the X direction. And again the mirror image on the other side. So there's our automotive part all formed up. You can see that we've put some interesting features in here. There's some slot and tab fit up on either end of the part here, and this is to facilitate the welding operation. So now the welder, instead of having to clamp several parts together in a jig, can just put a tack weld at each end of this part, and it's completely finished. A great example of how a good CNC press break and a little bit of design trickery can ease your downstream operations in fabrication, especially assembly and welding operations. So at this point, this concludes the demonstration period for the press break. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch today. We hope you found it helpful and informative. At this point in time, we've scheduled some extra time for questions. So hopefully you have some questions for us, and we'll do our best to address all of them. Again, thank you very much for your attention, and I hope you have a good afternoon.